can get this. I'm actually going to put my my uh, questions in front of my face so I don't look at me and I just am at whoever I am in front of you and I'm not caught up in that. All right. <laughs> All right. I am so excited to have you on the show, Mary. This is this is amazing. You have been all over the place. You have written seven-ish books, and you are now you've got this new book coming out right now called The Right Kind of Strong. Surprisingly simple habits of a spiritually strong woman. Yeah, the right ah. kind of strong. Yeah. See, I I, I, I adore that stuff because you know there's a part of me that I, I still remember going to Mexico with our church when I was younger, um, like in my twenties, thirties, and we were building houses. And I still remember like being up on, on the shack, you know, up building, putting stuff on the roof and doing this stuff and construction guys with us who were saying, I'd hire you, Paula. And I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah hey. we should do that. Right. Hey, and <laughs> you are a woman after my own heart. I am the happiest kind of girl when I have a power tool in my hand. Oh my so, goodness, they are the great yeah. equalizers, aren't they? <laughs> they <absolutely laughs> are. So, you know, power saw, drill, and uh, yeah, yeah, so I am totally with you on that. So yeah, if anybody were to have called me a weak woman, uh, they would have gotten an earful for sure because oh, goodness, I've never yeah. viewed myself that way. I've never viewed myself as a weak woman. You know, I was just always... Um, you know, felt, and I grew up in that era of women being told that you are strong, you are invincible, you are a woman, and um, yeah. I am woman. Hear me, hear me roar. roar! Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you know, that's uh, that's the self concept that I think culture, and even now more so, yeah. kind of puts into women. But the question, as I grew older, is okay. Um, I'm a strong woman, and then you're also, also I, I'm a woman who loves Jesus. So what right. does that what does that mean? Like, does does am I strong in the way that Jesus would want me to be strong? Am I strong in the right kind of way? Yeah. See, I, it's it's one of those. It's a struggle because I think we can feel it. I can feel it in my soul when I'm trying to push myself up, and I'm trying to say, "Yeah, look at me. I'm strong," or I'm. I, I went through some anger issues when I was younger and just kind of wanted to like stare people down and like, yeah, I could take it kind of thing. Um, I used to arm wrestle. Did you? Yeah. I had uh, five brothers and there was no way I was yeah. going to be proved to be, you know, weaker than my brothers. So I tell some funny stories about that in the book because uh, uh, we had some showdowns. <laughs> I was hired as a youth pastor many years ago uh, at a church where it's a small, small church, but it was like uh, the entire youth group were all these guys that wanted to be um, professional football and baseball players. And, you know, I'm like, you know, five foot five, whatever. And uh, I came in and I told them I wanted them to vote as to whether or not I would be their youth pastor, whether or not the church liked me. And um, I was sitting there and they, they had just met me. And there were some kids that came up to me afterwards. They said, Paula, were you in the military? You know, no, no, I wasn't. <laughs> but they, they were just, charge. Yeah, it was just one of those. And, and so there was this kind of like, I'd puff myself up sort of of like, yeah, you know, all these, all these, you know, six foot three guys are listening to me, you know, kind of, which was just ridiculous. Mm. Um, and it's not ultimately what, what brings glory to God. Absolutely. And, yeah. And so that's where I, I appreciate where you're coming from in this book. Well, so often our, our world's image of strength, and, a, and particularly when you think of what a strong woman is, mm -hmm. our world's image of that really almost is counter to what God's image is for strength. Because often what we see as strength um, is just um, arrogance or aggressiveness mm -hmm. yeah. or um, insensitivity or uh, being rude. Um, you know, we see, we see that as, oh, I'm a strong woman. And, uh, but, but when we hold that up, hold that model up to the word of God, um, and God wants strong women. I mean, Proverbs, yeah. yes, he Proverbs, does. Proverbs 31. I mean, let's be clear right up front is that the, the, the model, the ideal 
for women that is upheld in the Bible is that of a strong woman. Mm -hmm. uh, Proverbs 31 says she clothes herself with strength. She makes her arms strong. So, so that is totally in line with what God wants. But I think when we hold up the model, cultural model up uh, of a strong woman to the Bible, there are some discrepancies there because what, what culture says is strong um, in God's eyes can be weak, actually. So, right. And, yeah. and the same applies to guys, but it's, it's, we're constantly trying to show that we are also strong. And I think we lose track of the fact that God has designed us already to be strong as long yeah. as we're in line with what he's doing. Now, you took these, a couple verses in 2 Timothy and they're verses that not everybody likes. Yeah. Tell us what those verses are. Well, I didn't like them. Second <laughs> <laughs> Timothy 3, 6, and 7, where uh, Paul is describing this group of women in Ephesus. And he says that um, there are um, false teachers that creep into the homes of these women, uh, captivate them. Uh, these women are always laden, burdened down with sins. They're always learning, never able to acknowledge the truth. They are weak women. He calls them mm -hmm. weak women. Yeah, none of us like that. None of us like that. I sure didn't like that. No. So it was fascinating to, to dig into that passage and to think that that actually what what we take as a slur oh weak women was actually a challenge to not be that it is mm. it's a challenge is these women were weak and the reason paul called them weak women was that he didn't want them to be weak or he didn't think that that was a good thing and the word is fascinating actually um i don't know if you've ever heard of the book little women but it actually yeah yeah it actually means little women, the, the Greek phrase there. It's the word woman with a diminutive attached on the end. So it's kind of like um, woman-ish, woman. -ish, woman right. This is not an attack on the four foot nothing woman. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's, it's like true. you're less than what you can be as a woman. You are less than what you can be. You are just like a womanling. It's like you're a weakling. You're, 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 you're not... The, the full, strong, beautiful expression of true womanhood that God created you to be. Because and Paul had strong women around him. Absolutely. Um, Ephesus was, was the home of Priscilla and Aquila. Um, he had so many female co-workers that, that he lauded for being strong and, and working hard in the Lord. And he praised uh, the women in his sphere for that. So when he encountered these particular women in Ephesus, it was just, it graded on him. It was like, yeah. you know, this is not what, this is not what I like to see in uh, this is what not what women ought to be. Mm -hmm. So so uh, so it's a challenge. And so when we unpack that passage, we can see traits in their lives and uh, reasons for their diminished strength. Reasons for why they were less than they ought to have been. And it comes down to their habits. They didn't they didn't have uh, the right habits that would make them strong women. Mm. Yeah, see, and so you you take this in your book, and you you come up with these great habits for mm -hmm. women to to develop and work on, so that they can in fact become the right kind of strong. Can you summarize these the seven habits that you got there? Yeah, it's seven habits, and and it, you know what's? I, let me just preface that by saying um, you you just don't become a strong woman overnight. And 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 it, when when I talk about habits, it's because people think you know, oh, you're just going to be well, I'm just going to decide to be strong. Right. But 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 growing strong is is a process. It's like you don't go to the gym, you know, one two big three big pumps on the big shiny right. and then you're you know all your muscles pop. It doesn't work that way. Uh, you, there needs to be. Some we wish it would, don't we? Though. <laughs> oh my goodness, I wish it would. It doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't work that way for our kids when they're learning stuff either. So no. yeah. Oh, and it doesn't work that way for us and it doesn't work that way for strength. So there's, so strength is developed when there are a lot of little things that we do consistently a lot over time. So, so that's why I said uh, surprisingly simple habits. They're simple because there's, they're just little things. It's not like 
big expectations, but they need to, there needs to be some consistency, there needs to be some effort put in, and there needs to be some awareness of what it is that will increase your strength and what it is that will sap your strength. Mm-hmm. So, That's, well, and, and, and as I understand it, um, I mean, basically, these are things, it's like these are the warning signs. Yeah. You're going down the wrong path if you're going the opposite of these. Yeah, absolutely. If you're doing, if you're doing the opposite of these, that, and which, which is the case for the women in Ephesus. This is Paul's description of what they were doing, mm-hmm. and uh, it was making them weak. So the very first one is that uh, these, and, and here's the thing. I mean, there, there are things that come to mind when you think, okay, what do I need to be spiritually strong? Well, you need to be in the Word. You need to be right. um, fellowshipping with Christians. You need to, to be seeking to obey the Lord. And, and those are kind of your obvious ones. You need to be in fellowship. Um, we need each other. We yeah. need each other. Yeah. But, but these ones are a little bit more subtle. They're kind of like in your private daily life, things that you need to be addressing. And the first one is you need to be taking a look um, for creeps, what I call creeps. Uh, the, the passage talks about these false teachers that were creeping their way into these women's lives. Mm. And, and uh, I think that, that one of the things that, that um, I see as a problem uh, that weakens women is they don't pay attention to those little things, those, those little slip ups, the little compromises, um, the, the little things that actually encroach on them and sap their spiritual strength. They think, Oh, well, that's not a big deal. That compromise, you know, skipping this isn't a big deal going here isn't a big deal right and it's true none of those things in and of themselves are probably a big deal but it's it's all those little things and um um, i i like to say sin doesn't advance by leaps it advances by creeps one one tiny compromise at a time and that's uh and that's what was happening uh these women were allowing these creeps uh, and a creep isn't just a person. A creep isn't just a guy. I think there there are all sorts of creeps that we can allow into our lives in terms of our attitudes. Um, Give us an example. Oh, like easy example is is okay. You you have like a little bit of a, uh, somebody slighted you. Somebody did what you didn't like, and you have a little bit of a feeling. Maybe your husband, and uh, you have a little bit of a feeling of resentment. Well, mm-hmm. instead of dealing with it and stopping that you have another feeling of resentment and then you start like uh, that resentment attitude bubbles up and it starts becoming um, words and you start having critical words and then Mm -hmm. the words get more critical and then you start bickering more and more and so so there's a creep advancing on your relationship with your husband and 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 it's an attitude creep and it's a creep in terms of the words you're using um, and then there's things like, like just allowing um, the television programs, you know, the compromise right. that right. you that you allow into your into your home. It's like you you can justify it and go, okay, well, it's no big deal, it's just entertainment. Well, just entertainment. Yeah. Um, everybody's watching it. I'm gonna and you put up with things now that you would have never ever dreamed of watching maybe right. five years ago. So that's a creep. That's, you know, something's creeping into your life. And if you tolerate those creeps, um, something, you're, it's going to take you down the wrong path. It's going to weaken you and uh, it's going to impact you spiritually. It's going to make you spiritually weak. And of course, that that's how it happens. Like right. when I talk to women and their marriages have broken down, they've had affairs, they've, you know, blown everything up. Um, it's hard for them to look back and figure out where they went wrong because it wasn't sort of the one big compromise. You don't wake oh, up yeah, in yeah, the yeah. morning. And go, you don't wake up in the morning and go, Hey, I think today I'm going to have an affair. It's like, no, you entertain um, maybe some flirtation with the guy at work. You um, then you, you know, start texting him and then maybe the texts start getting a little bit more suggestive. And then you, know, you start maybe meet up with him for lunch. Um, right. And, and then maybe, you know, the flirtation and then the attraction, and then you dwell on it in your mind. So it doesn't just happen in one big leap. It happens in a series of little 
little compromises. So which is why you say the next one is like mastering your mind. Absolutely. Right. So, so yeah, the first one's a biggie and, and we need to constantly be on the lookout for that. And yeah, the second one is mastering your mind because the women at Ephesus were captivated. They were taken captive. So they were enthralled. They were sucked in by these creeps and um, uh, they were taken captive in their minds. And there's an element in there of psychological um, warfare or domination. And, and, and that's where we often have to deal with sin is in our minds we think yeah. the wrong way we think the wrong thoughts we aren't we aren't capturing and taking those thoughts captive for christ on an ongoing basis whether it's thoughts about sin or even when it's thoughts about uh wrong thoughts about our identity like i'm not good enough i can't do this i'm a failure i'm ugly nobody loves me nobody oh likes my goodness me. we all get in that right we get oh my goodness that. yeah 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 yeah, thousands of thoughts a day, right? Mm -hmm. And yet we're not thinking according to the word of God. And so that's, you know, mastering our minds is, is, uh, is the second habit. Um, and then another one, oh, I'm just doing these off the top of my head. <laughs> I've got them in front of me. Them all. So you've got it. Got, got, I've got them in front of me. So <laughs> like, uh, you've got ditch your baggage. Yeah. You know, being your able to let yeah. go of the things that have held on to you in the past. Absolutely. Things in the past and not just in the past, like on an ongoing basis, like dealing with sin on an ongoing basis. So when there's a creep in my life, when I notice, okay, um, I'm having issues with my attitude, then right away, you repent of that. You go, Lord, I am so sorry that I am sinning against you and um, that I'm not living the way that you want me to live. Help me you know, correct my attitude. I've sinned. And so, so uh, these, these women in Ephesus, it says that they were loaded down with all sorts of sin and the image is of like a baggage, like piled up way high. So they weren't like checking off the baggage. They were just getting weighed down and weighed down and weighed down by it. And I think mm -hmm. there's, there's baggage that God um, gives us strength to bear like difficult circumstances right right um, you know hard things he gives us strength for that but there's stuff that we're not supposed to have on our carts stuff like sin and shame well, and other people's stuff i mean sometimes we other, people have other stuff. people's stuff that as if it's our own and man that's like yeah. i don't actually have enough space to hold on to their all yeah stuff. <laughs> yeah it just weighs us down so dealing with that on an ongoing basis uh so what's the next one the that engage your emotions Ah, oh, that's a biggie, isn't there? At that oh, yeah. getting a getting a grip on your emotions. Uh, these women in Ephesus were led astray by various passions. That's the phrase uh, yep. in those verses. So, passions, in other words, their desires, their emotions, the stuff that they were but, feeling, which aren't bad things, but they can get manipulated. Things. Yeah, we're leading them astray. So yep. the question is, how do you take all those emotions? And uh, you don't want to suppress your emotions. God gave us emotions and emotions are a wonderful thing. So how do you harness that, those, evaluate them, but not let your emotions drive you around? So your emotions should be like the indicator lights on a dashboard, shouldn't be like your steering wheel. So, yeah. you know, getting a grip on those emotions and oh my goodness, we all know as women that we have plenty of those. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, especially a lot, you know, around that time of the month and those hormonal changes and oh my goodness, all our whole lives we deal with that. Well, now as as, as we're going through this and we're looking at these these different um, things that you you're talking about, I love the story you told about your friend Pearl Purdy um, <laughs> because it was just one of those great examples of so that's what strong really looks like. Mm -hmm. Can you just tell us a little bit about Pearl? Well, Pearl was a lady that was, <clears throat> excuse me, in my church when I was growing up. And she was just this wee little thing and um, old, really, really, really old. <laughs> so, um, and I was in my uh, early 20s and late, late teens and early 20s. And uh, I was a go getter and I was in. Uh, studying rehab medicine. I was going to be a professional, you know, a professional degree, professional woman. Mm -hmm. And all the women that I hung out with were these women who were strong women and, um, you know, professional. We were going to, you know, had the world, we we're going to, you know, conquer the world and make a difference and, and driven and aggressive. Um, 
And Pearl invited me over to play shuffleboard. She was British and um, she was always, she was all about the perfect pot of tea. Uh, it's, I, I learned how to make the perfect pot of tea. I've probably forgotten half of it. I think but. some ladies miss out when they, when they don't spend time with somebody like that. They're so, so different yeah. from who, like so different from who I am now, but there's a value to this, like the richness that they bring to our lives. Absolutely. And that was the thing. Like Pearl was so different and she was, she, you know, she didn't have a degree. She was totally opposite of my concept of a strong woman. Mm -hmm. And yet going over to her house and spending time with her and hanging out with her, I, my eyes were open to the fact that, wow, this woman is way stronger than I am when you put, when you go by a spiritual me measuring stick, yeah. um, when you go by God's measuring stick and not the measuring stick that the world puts out in front of, uh, in front of you. So, I mean, strength comes in all shapes and sizes and, uh, you know, professional women uh, um, can be a strong woman as well, but it, it just, it just really challenged my concept of what it meant to be strong. What the and actual strength really was what strength really was and also just that mentoring relationship right that that when you hang out with women who are older godly women your eyes are open to so much truth and it's such a rich relationship even yeah, we if all need that yeah we all need that even if all you're doing is playing shuffleboard and drinking tea mm -hmm. it's, there's just something about that life on life um mentorship that that goes on that is so valuable so that was pearl purdy to me and uh you know pearl the the giant slayer, just four foot 11 or whatever she was. She was pretty small. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's actually my daughter's height. So it's kind of fun. I, guess, I just picture her one day being that spiritual giant. I hope I pray. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> now, as we're wrapping up, one thing I always ask everybody is mm -hmm. what is your favorite Bible verse right now? Ooh, wow. Okay. Well, I mean, if I, if I were to relate it to um, my book, uh, it would be Be Strong in the Lord and in His Mighty Power, that, that the strength that we find isn't something that we have to pull out of our own, own selves. Like the strength doesn't originate within me. It's uh, a strong woman. I'm, I'm strong whenever I rely on God. So I can, I can be, I can, in and of myself, I can have strength or I can have weakness. It doesn't matter what mix I bring to the table. Um, I am only strong when I am strong in God's strength and in mm. his mighty power. And that's kind of the bottom line message. Um, the whole thing boils down to finding the right kind of strength and the right kind of strength is not something that I will find within myself. The right kind of strength is something that I find solidly in the Lord. Mm, thank you. That, that, yes, that is absolutely true. And that's a, that's a great verse. So how can we pray for you where you're at right now? Oh, um, well, I've got some projects on the go, uh, busy fall coming down, um, so you, you can just pray for, for just um, wisdom, mm -hmm. when to say yes, when to say no, how to balance life. I think that's something we all need. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I, I find that as I get older, I probably even need it more. Um, you know, it's always, I call it life on the BOSU ball. You know, you're always juggling <laughs> and uh, adjusting the weight you give things and the priority and mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, that's a, that's a continual prayer for me, just knowing where God would have me, um, invest my time, um, and, uh, and, and making sure that, that, that there's just a good balance for where I allocate that. Mm. Okay. You know, I, I thank you so much for coming on the show and for giving us your time and helping us to understand what the right kind of smart and the right kind of strong, excuse me, is. Well, the right kind of strong is the right kind of smart. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and just, you know, I, I appreciate all that you've done. I mean, you've got some great books out there. I mean, where can, where can people find out more about you? Where can they look? Uh, you can look at marycassian.com or uh, just if you go to your favorite bookseller, you know, just, just Google my name and uh, you'll find all the books come up. So right kind of strong is available now. It's a great read. It's a great Bible study. If you want to get together a group of women, I would encourage you to do that. Um, yeah, great, great thing to be challenging each other that way. All right. I thank you so much. 
and uh, just enjoy this season. And we will be praying for your wisdom in, in all that you're doing. Thanks, Paula. Good to be with you.